we're going to take a look at the graph of another direct variation. This time the variation is y varies directly as x squared. Now this little exponent of 2 means we're not going to have lines for our graph this time. We're going to have a quadratic and a quadratic function always graphs as a parabola equal 1. We'll have y equals 1x squared, which is another way of saying y equals x squared. Now that's going to give us a parabola that is going to open upward and it's going to go into the first quadrant like that and into the second quadrant like that. Now, even though I've drawn this freehand, you do see that the y-axis is an axis of symmetry and this thing is symmetric to the y-axis, meaning what you have over here is the same as what you have over here. y equals 2x squared. This is going to have an effect of narrowing or for every x we plug in here it's going to get squared and then it's going to get doubled to become the y so it's going to skinny up your parabola. So it'll look a little bit like this. A little bit thinner. 10x squared. It'll get even thinner, but the higher your k or the higher your k is, the skinnier your parabola will get. Now the thing that's neat about this is the domain and the range. Your domain can be anything. You can see that the x values, which of course is your independent variable, can be anything here. Anything at all because these these arrows continue on and on and on and on forever so this thing ultimately gets wider and wider. You can have lots and lots of different x values here. So the domain for this these graphs right here, the domain is equal to the set of all real numbers because x can be anything. However, on this particular function, the range, okay, the range if k is positive, okay, if k is positive, no matter how big k gets, it will never ever generate a y value that's negative because of the squaring here. So the range, the range will never be negative. So it is all non-negative numbers. Non-negative numbers. Now I say non-negative because it does include the zero and zero is not negative nor is it positive. So I can't say it's all positive numbers because it does include the zero and zero isn't positive, it's just neutral. Alright, now let's see what happens if we try a k that is less than one but is still positive, like a fraction. Alright, um, we would get y is equal to, let's start out with one half. One half x squared. Well the effect of that Remember the purple here is the y equals 1x squared. Now we're going half, 1 half x squared. So that's going to have the effect of flattening out the parabola. In fact, if we try y equals, let's say, 1 fifth x squared, it's going to get even flatter. But if you'll notice, everything still is in the first two quadrants. So we do not have any negative range values. The domain is still the set of all real numbers, and the range is the set of all non-negative numbers. All right, so let's say, see what would happen if we started to multiply by negative numbers. What if our constant of variation turns out to be negative? So. Let's start with y equals negative 1x squared. Instead of positive 1x squared, we'll have negative 1x squared. Well, the effect 
of that will turn the parabola upside down. And again, this is a, a review of Algebra 1. You still have your vertex there at 0, 0, but this time your vertex is at the top of the curve. So this vertex right here is called a maximum. A maximum because it's literally the, the highest or the tallest point on the whole curve. Maximum. Now, for these parabolas which open upwards, the vertex is at the bottom of the curve, and so on these ones, the vertex is referred to as a minimum point. Minimum, because it's the lowest point. All right, so now we're going upside down, and the same thing's going to happen. As we get more and more negative, like negative 2x squared, it would get a little bit skinnier, but still opening downward. And if we go negative 5x squared, it's going to get even skinnier, just like we had above. And if we do the fractional thing, I'll put that over here, y equals negative 1 half x squared, it's still going to open downward, but it'll flare out and it'll be a little bit flatter. I didn't draw that very symmetrically, I apologize there. And so on. Down, and again, this is a, a review of Algebra 1. You still have your vertex there at 0, 0, but this time your vertex is at the top of the curve. So this vertex right here is called a maximum. A maximum because it's literally the, the highest or the tallest point on the whole curve. Maximum. Now, for these parabolas which open upwards, the vertex is at the bottom of the curve, and so on these ones, the vertex is referred to as a minimum point. Minimum, because it's the lowest point. All right, so now we're going upside down, and the same thing's going to happen. As we get more and more negative, like negative 2x squared, it would get a little bit skinnier, but still opening downward. And if we go negative 5x squared, it's going to get even skinnier, just like we had above. And if we do the fractional thing, I'll put that over here, y equals negative 1 half x squared. It's still going to open downward, but it'll flare out and it'll be a little bit flatter. I didn't draw that very symmetrically, I apologize there and so on.